Hello and welcome to my workshop. Today is going to be a brand new segment for this channel and that is a tutorial on Vetrix Aspire. Now Vetrix Aspire is the program that you are going to need if you want to make your own 3D objects uh, or indeed manipulate um, grayscale images and 3D objects. This tutorial I am going to take a grayscale image straight off the internet and uh, we're going to clean it up and um, I will show you exactly what to do to make it into a decent 3D file including the tools to use and the speed and feeds and we'll also create some new tools in the tool filing list in the Aspire list of tools. <laughs> and I'll show you some of the tools uh, that's used in 3D modeling then to clean these, uh, these files up. Okay, so this is my channel page. Uh, I have uh, two channels now. Uh, to get to my second channel is uh, just hit that, uh, that bar on the banner there and that'll take you to my second channel. Um, I just thought I'd point that out for those of you who don't already know. Uh, and I'm filming off this uh, large screen um, well because I talk a lot with my hands. We'll drop this down Okay, so we'll pull up Aspire, and this is the opening screen, the CAD part of the screen, or 2D layer. Okay, so what you first do, and it's very self-explanatory, um, Aspire is, is sort of laid out in a very methodical manner, and it assists you um, to do the, whatever operation is required, it will assist you to do it. And it sets, it sets it out sort of, not alphabetical order, but in methodical order, such as the opening screen, and it asks you these simple sort of questions. Uh, and the first little window up here says um, job type. And actually the material we're going to use is hue and pine. Now this is only grown in southern Tasmania and this is a piece of it. Uh, it's very, very, it's a very, very long-lived tree. Um, say for, if you sat down and counted the, the amount of rings on here, you'd find out that this, this piece that I have in my hand is over 400 years. And this is like, uh, you know, just part of the tree. They're very, very long-lived. They can live up to 4,000 4, years old. Um, and this, you know, you don't come by this sort of material very easily. It's uh, very expensive. So, we are going to measure it first. Some of you like working in inches and others like working in metric. Um, now, I, I'm going to do this in, in metric, but please tell me in the comments what you prefer. Unless you let me know, I don't know. Um, so that's 200 long by 170 across by by 20 millimeters. Okay, it's 25.4 millimeters to an inch for just a, a bit of a reference. So that's uh, what's that? Seven and three quarter. But no, seven and three quarter. What am I talking about? Six and three quarter by seven and three quarter okay just a rough uh, three quarters of an inch all right so we'll, we'll do this in uh, metric okay okay 170 170 by 200 okay okay so the first window up here it says job type now what that means is whether it's a single face or single sided that you're going to do a 3D carving or 2D carving or whatever it is in one face or whether you're going to carve something in this face, turn it over and carve something in that face that's double sided and then rotary, obviously with a rotary fourth 
axes. So you give that bit of information first, and in this case it's single, single side. Um, then you go to the geometry of the raw material, which is what we're going to do right now. Now the X is across this way, um, across the machine then. Uh, so that's 170. So you just come up here and fill that in one, 170. And the Y, the Y is 200, I think. Y is 200 and 19 mil, that's 20 mil actually. 20, and it's millimeters. It probably would be good to, to tell that this, uh, you know, put in this, fill in this window here. Um, you know, you start off whether you're going to be inches or millimeters. I probably should have done that first, but it's already preset for what I'm doing. Um, okay, the next one is the zero position of the material, not the tool, the material. In other words, are you working off the machine bed, in this case it would be down here, okay, or are you working on the material surface, which is up here. In our case it's the material surface, we want to start on the top of the, the surface here. See, I talk with my hands. <laughs> um, so this one is correct, material surface. Next window down is, well, where do you want the zero, zero position? The X, Y, zero. So you can have it in the center or in any corner. Now with the CNC router, it is normally this front corner here. Uh, depending on the type of work that you're doing, so if it's a coin or something like that, you'll see in some of my videos, I start in the middle here and I do a rotary machine in. But in this case, we're, uh, we would be doing, or the, I'm going to set the program up to do a machine in in the X, back and forth in the X, which is called a raster. Okay, back and forth, like this. So in that case, we want this front corner which it is. Uh, we don't want any offset. Okay. Um, leave, I would personally leave the offset alone. Um, now this next window down here, um, leave it as a standard. Okay. Because what, what this actually means is, if you go into it, now this is the resolution of the graphics then. And if you put it on very high, it's going to slow your computer up a lot. Unless you've got one of these gaming type computers, um, you know, that are very, very fast. Leave it on the standard, that is fine. Now then, this here, uh, this is going to determine what color is presented and even the down to the texture is presented on here of your three-dimensional object. So well we've got pine, although this is hue and pine, uh, which is slightly different than ordinary or quite a bit different than ordinary pine. Uh, we're we're going to choose pine for the for the colour I suppose. And that going overhead is the emergency um, care flight because the other side of the mountain here is uh, is where it's based. So from time to time you do get that. <laughs> okay, so we're going to now choose um, open this up. It gives you a listing. You can have beach, uh, dark, light, birch, so on and so on and so on, oak. Uh, walnut, brass, gold, uh, we want pine, here it is here, pine, just standard pine, okay, so then when you filled 
this, in, this by the way, is what's commonly known as a wizard. Okay, when you get uh, a section like this where you have things to fill in in these type of programs, it's called a, a wizard. So you click OK. Okay, so now we have our material here, and this next section then it gives you the uh, the, the the tools um, that you can use to draw squares, circles, and what what is called vectors. Any line or mac, uh, no matter what shape that's presented onto this screen, is called a vector. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in a genuine grayscale picture. So to bring a grayscale picture in, you come up here to File, then come down to Import, and we're going to import a bitmap. Now it's going to ask me where from. Well, they're, they're all coming up here because it's on my desktop. And we'll choose one. I quite like this one here. So we double click that and there it is. Now this is a grey scale image. It's a little smoky. I think the cameras are picking that up. Um, now, so it's not a negative or a black and white photograph. This is a scanned 3D object and uh, there's 256 different shades of grey in this picture. And what Aspire does, it assigns a Z height to each different shade of 256 greys. So the darker the colour to black, the deeper in it is. And the lighter to white, see the very, very peaks here are nearly white, are furthest out. I mean, you control uh, the maximum or minimum scale of Z, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to make a component out of this. Now, just say, for example, we were going to bring in three, four, five, or however many of these to make one picture. Well, you have to bring them in individually and you have to assign them a layer so you're able to treat each individual one separately. And in Aspire's case, they're, they're called components, like a jigsaw puzzle. Okay, so you can put a jigsaw puzzle up, with, up together with different components, different parts. So that's simply what it is. Um, so we're going to make a component out of this now. So to do that, in other words, turn it to a 3D image. Because if you went to the 3D pane or window now, there's nothing there. Just a blank, blank piece of wood. So what you do, you come up here to model and we already know that we're de dealing with a bitmap so create component from a bitmap. One click. Okay, doesn't look as though anything's happened does it? Not until you go to the 3D screen. There it is. Straight away, it's converted it to a 3D image. Albeit a little bit snowy, the snowiness and the marks around here, this is noise. Uh, uh, Shall we say electronic noise then that's coming with the image. Now, in Aspire, there are tools and filters in the program that will clean this up and make it perfect and crisp. 
uh, so you can then uh, create the tool paths. So first of all we're going to treat this and make it a perfect image. Aspire is probably the most powerful program on the market that you can do this with. So we're going to go down here, down to the bottom of the screen here, and we're going to the modeling window now. So it brings up all the 3D modeling tools up in this top corner here. The top line, or the second line as well, these are the 3D creating tools. Like, uh, just say for example, I wanted another pearl on this necklace up here. Well, these tools here can create a pearl to go on there or manipulate any part of the photograph, uh, sorry, 3D image that you want. But in our case, we're going to, first of all, use one of the filters. It's a cleaning filter, which is this one here, the second one on this bottom row. Apply smoothing filter. Okay. One click, and it brings up a little dialog box with a slider bar. So, you can look at the picture, catch out of the slider bar, and... You don't want to do too much, oh, probably about 10% there. That'll do. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, apply that. Done. Okay, that's the first thing to do. It takes out a lot of the imperfections there. So we close that. Now what we're going to do is pull this picture up. Okay, make it four or five times as deep as what it is. Make it a real standout 3D. And you do that with this tool here, which is Scale Z Height Tool. Now this is in a per percentage Okay, so we're going to go a little bit at a time. Well, that's too, too, too um, a lot at a time. <laughs> that's 260. In actual fact, Aspire has taken over, right? And it has brought up the ideal height for this. Uh, and, I, and Aspire will actually learn your method of working. So it's done it automatically, it's taken over. But you'll notice it's a little, any little imperfection that was left there from the last smoothing filter, of course it's magnified as well. So we're going to clean that up now. We're going to accept that. So we're going to OK that. And then we're going to go back into the filter again. And we're going to give this a little clean, only a little bit. That's fine. Lock that in. OK it. Close it. Let's have a look what we've got. Oh, look at that. You can see the hair, the pearls the clothing, the hat, look at that, perfect height for this type of 3D image. Okay, so, you know, down to the, 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 the chin here, the depth of the chin, this is, uh, this is going to be a, a beautiful 3D carving. The little tiny bit of snowiness that you see here now, it's not going to come out in the machine. It's just, the, the tool just isn't going to really see that. Talking of tools, now that's what we're going to do next. So our next job now is to 
machine this. Three, and we're going to do this in two operations. We're going to clean out a lot of the uh, material with a, an end mill. Uh, then we're going to go in there with a ball mill and do it in one complete cut. Okay, so now we're going to uh, choose some tools to machine this. Now, there's no great mystery in it. So, first of all, we need, we've done with this part of the uh, program now, so we can get rid of that. So we can unpin it off the screen. Uh, this, uh, this is the tool path or tool strategy uh, window that comes up. And there's a couple of things we need to to look at here. First of all, set. I'm going to set the material setup now for Z. Okay, so this is all set up. Okay. Now then, we're going to use two strategies. Let's first go back. Now select your image, which is what we just did there. So now what we're going to do is, these are all different um, tool machining strategies, okay? Uh, this is a, a profiling uh, strategy or a pocket, uh, drilling tool paths, uh, and so on and so forth, and so on and so forth. Um, V-curving, but what we want to do is we want to do two machining operations. We want to do two machining operations here, which is this one, which is a 3D roughing toolpath. So we select that one. So, okay, there it is there. That's the heading. That's the type of toolpath we're, we're going to be doing. It's a 3D um, roughing machining. Now, we need to now select a tool. Um, and what I'm going to do, now you have to have some sort of image in your head of, well, okay, this is, a, this, is a, this is actual size of the material. Now, you're not going to go putting a, a, you know, sort of a half inch end mill in here to remove the material because a lot of material will be left. Um, and I, I want to get in and and take out as much material as I can. So I'm going to use a six millimeter end mill. That's a six millimeter end mill there. It's a three flute. Because I can, I can get in and get a lot, a lot more material out from there. Um, so that's the tool we're going to select first for this particular job. So here it is here, end mill, six millimeter. And we're going to select that, so we're going to say OK. But then we're going to edit for this particular material. OK. Now, it's pine, so it's fairly easy material, fairly soft material to cut. Um, so we'll just check it's a six millimeter diameter, which is correct. Um, now then, the cutting parameters. This is the speed and feeds. Okay, so what we'll do first, passing depth. Now, three millimeter is a little bit too deep, I consider. Two millimeter is is better. It's better to go carefully because, in actual fact, I'm probably going to go 1.5 millimeter because you will end up splintering the material and taking off part of a nose or something. <laughs> so gently, gently, and you'll get the job done first time. So we're going to say 1.5 in depth. Step over. Okay, so each time 
uh, it sort of takes material out in one track or one movement, it's going to progress into the material, the amount that we're going to set now. And I would say pretty conservative here, because there again, I don't want to splinter, splinter any material away and spoil the 3D image. I'm going to say 1.5 again. Okay. You can actually alter it with percentage as well if you wish. RPM, spindle RPM. Um, now, this is one of the secrets. The faster you want to move through the material, the faster you want the RPM. Okay? Otherwise, the tool is going to get bogged down. Or it can also start burning the material too. So, uh, we're going to say, I'm going to take that up a little further. I'm going to say 14,000 RPM. Uh, feed rate. Now, this again is left over from the last job that I was doing. Aspire will learn from your whatever. <laughs> the use of the program, it learns what, how, how you, you operate with it. 60 millimeters a second. I'll show you 60 millimeters a second for those of you who are in inches. Well, anyway, it's, it's just, um, it's two and three eighths per second in Imperial. That's getting along. That's pretty quick. So that's why you need the extra RPM to be able to cut and evacuate the material out. Um, but in Mark III, I normally start up at 10%. So it'll be 10% of this figure. Okay, so it'll be 6 millimeters a second, which is pretty, you know, pretty sedate. And then in Mark III, I speed it up to, you know, to see how the cuts go in. And then I consider, you, you know, by the sound of it and seeing it, whether it's burning it or whether it's not, or, you know, you can determine then and alter it in Mark III, you can speed the process up. In other words, you can bring it up to 60 millimeters a second gradually. And if it's absolutely fine, you know, and there's no burning occurring, you can actually, in Mark III, you can raise this up to 18,000 or 20,000 if you want to, and take this up to 100 millimeters a second, if your machine will stand it. Um, and that, I'm going to leave it at that, because in Mark III, I know I can alter it. So that, that's fine. Um, I'm going to say 25, and it's tool number one, and we're going to OK that. Now, the next thing, we have a choice of the type of machining. Uh, we can machine, take out the material immediately on the model itself. Okay, that's model boundary. If you had an imaginary line around here, okay, that's the model boundary. Um, material boundary. That's this actual size of the material here. The material, material layer boundary. In our case, that is what we want. We want to machine all of this. Okay, it's not going to take any of this out, but it's certainly going to come in here and we're going to machine the whole of this out in a roughing strategy. So that's what we're going to choose. Machining allowance, one millimeter. I would leave it at that. In other words, it's going to leave one millimeter of material minimum 
uh, over this 3D image to be cut with the finishing cut. Um, now this is where we can choose the type of cutting. Now this is my preferred for roughing and that is a X raster. You can do a Y raster as well. I don't particularly like that. Or you can do a 3D um, roughing pass, which is this. In other words, it'll it'll machine in the the X this like, like this, and it will go similar to a finishing uh, pass, but it will machine out um, as though it was a finishing uh, machine. Um, it would machine like a, a finishing strategy. However, it's it will still leave material there for you. Uh, and I consider that to be a waste of time for this type of job. So uh, an X raster, that's what I prefer. Um, ramp moves, definitely. A distance, uh, I would say five millimeter here. That's my preference. Safe Z, 5mm. In other words, the safe uh, tool d height in Z over the material to move from A to B, 5mm. That's fine. In a, you know, for a tool that size and the material job that this is, that's fine. Um, safe Z, 5mm. Yeah, that's fine. We don't need, um, we can leave it at that. Tool number one, rough in, calculate. There we go. Uh, now, if you notice, it's actually machining past, okay, the material. Well, we don't particularly want that, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the 2D, See, it's machine in here, past this. So what we're going to do is bring up the drawing tools, pick the square, that was rectangle, and we're going to go here. And we're going to draw a rectangle there, slightly smaller than our material size. And we're going to apply that. I'm going to get out of that. And we're going to select that. We've just made a boundary layer for machining purposes. Back into 3D. Double click on the roughing. Selected vector. Okay, so we just made a vector, which was also a our boundary layer. Okay, because we don't want this wasted time and wasted machining. Okay, and we're going to calculate that. There we go. And we will simulate that. Okay, so it's taken out all the material of just our 3D image there. And it's just left the bare minimum. Okay, and that's another reason why I used a 6mm tool, end mill, to do this, to get in all this area and take out as much material as possible, okay, without breaking or fracturing the material um, into the, the model that we want left there. Because this tool would not take out half as much material as what the little 6 mil would. So that's that. And so now what we do to pass, okay, close, close that. So now we go back in and choose the finishing 
uh, strategy. Um, so now we're going to pick a tool. Now, this is an individual test, um, but what I have found over the years is uh, these tapered, these tapered cutting tools uh, for this particular particular type of job is perfect. They don't flex, okay, so there's no chattering, uh, very minimal furring of the material is left. Um, and th this is what I generally use and I would recommend. Um, you know, there's no need to put a six mil ball mill through there uh, first. You can do it with one operation, this one. And what this is, it's a two millimeter ball at the end. Are they called? It's, it's a, a one millimeter radius, okay, on the end. Uh, and it's uh, a, a 35 millimeter cutting edge long and it's tapered to a six millimeter shank, shank, quarter of an inch. Okay, so that's that tool. They are not cheap. Uh, this isn't tool steel. This this is um, this is tungsten. Okay, so it will last you a long, long time, providing you don't snap it. <laughs> and they're about um, anywhere between fifty and seventy dollars each. So they're not uh, they're not exactly cheap, but you know, I recommend them. So that's what we're going to use, but the tool doesn't exist in, in uh, Aspire. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into, uh, let me see, and those ball knolls. Here we go. Uh, and we're going to create a tool. I'm going to create a tool in a most simple way. Okay, so choose a three mil ball mill. Come down here, copy that, then choose the one above it there, the, the copy, just made the copy. Choose that one because we're going to alter that one to two millimeter diameter. And then we do that uh, up in here and we're going to say, okay, it's a two millimeter It's two millimeter diameter. As a ball nose, now what I do, I abbreviate everything. I'm, as long as I know what it is on here, just from a glance, uh, you know, it's fine, but you can, you know, do whatever you want. I just put in here a capital T for taper. So I can distinguish that's what it is. It's a ball mill. Uh, Geometry. So what you write in here actually is what appears in the listing. Uh, geometry. Two millimeter diameter. Okay, that measurement there. Step over. Mm. Point one five. That way it's a nice crisp, uh, you know, sort of there's no lines, nice crisp cut. And there again, it diminishes the fur in, any fur in that's left. With a smaller step over, it actually cuts it out. But, you know, you, 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 it's going to take a longer to cut. Spindle speed. Okay. 20,000 RPM. Feed rate, 50 millimeters a second. Because don't forget, in Mach 3, you can, you know, you can uh, slow it down or speed it up. So it's, it's uh, generally what I use for the uh, tapered uh, plunge rate. Now, I want it to actually operate up and down fairly damn quickly. So I normally do 50% of what the, the running speed is. So we're going to go 25 here. 
and this is tool number two and we're going to go apply okay so now that's locked into Aspire the tooling list you created a new tool uh, so now I'm going to okay that so then that's transferred into into here there it is there ball nose T taper two millimeter uh, it's already been selected so I'm going to edit it I don't have to edit it because I already have uh, but for, you know for different materials you would edit it here not in the tooling list and we're going to OK this um, offset mm, no raster if you did an offset it would sort of go around and around and around if it was a spherical thing if it was round like a coin I would go offset all right where it would start and go around and around and around um, but no normal raster okay back and forth that's fine uh, we don't want any angle we don't want to go at any angle we just want straight raster in the X this is all okay the materials already set up finish I'm gonna to say tool 2 as a 3D finishing, calculate. Takes a minute or two. Thousands and thousands of lines of code. Done. Sea of blue. <laughs> Okay, so we will and there you go. That's the finished thing. And we've allowed it to come and machine into here as well because that gives us a nice clean side. Okay. So that's the finished thing. That's exactly what it's going to look like. Beautiful. A beautiful plaque for anybody's wall. See this, you know, you can see the, you know, the hair, the general sort of hair line and wave and pearls and clothing. It's, it's perfect. And you can see that there's quite a depth here. That's, uh, that's nearly half an inch deep. So it's, it's, it's very nice, very nice. Okay, well, I hope you've liked um, this tutorial on, or the first tutorial of Vetrix Aspire. And I hope you join me for more uh, in one of my two channels. Um, so thank you for joining me and please press like and subscribe and uh, don't forget in the comment section uh, let me know what you think or you know sort of uh, what you would like to see and uh, whether you'd like to see it in imperial or metric let me know and uh, you know I'll see what I can do please like subscribe and uh, come into my channel and have a look see what else is there uh, on my channel you'll find wood turning, CNC machining, routers and um, CNC milling and also lasers and a little bit of 3D printing as well and the associated programs uh, with these. So thank you for joining me and it's bye for now. <laughs>